What's going on everyone? Tyler here again. Now I got some more HDR work for you. And uh, I'm going to take you through the entire process except for the HDR tone mapping. Which if you want to see a video of HDR tone mapping, you can visit my page. Uh, Tyler's Foot Video dot com or Tyler's Foot Video on YouTube. And let's see right here. HDR photography tutorial Canon 60D and this works for all cameras. So now let's get into HDR for basically any camera. It does not matter. And I'm going to take you through another process in Photoshop with camera raw processing the way you want to set it up to start your HDR process. Now I love to take it into Photoshop because it has the best noise reduction and I like to take all these settings and if you just put them right down the middle and don't over exaggerate them that's pretty much a good starting point for this now for your HDR images you don't want to do any uh, pushing and pulling on this side now what I'm gonna do is a little special for this because a lot of times in here you can see my mouse right up in here you will get a lot of noise in the sky that is because not because that your camera has noise it's because the program is doing its best to push and pull and get the most detail out of areas of interest so a lot of times when you have like areas like this let me go up another image real quick it will pull out all the noise and I'm at 100 ISO on my 60D so really there's no noise there in this one let's zoom in you can see there's absolutely no noise a little bit of um, dirt on my sensor but there's no noise and this is very common in uh, toe mapping it will pull out everything that I can see and it sometimes a lot of times 90% of the times it does not know the difference between oops we've got a full image does not know the difference between camera noise and detail so basically select them all and we'll let Photoshop do the noise reduction which I've already done and this is uh, Photoshop CS6 and this is camera raw 7.1 and I like to put the sharpening on the middle and noise reduction on the middle and that's all you need to do make sure all these are in the middle you don't mess any of this because it will actually degrade your quality in your HDR processing. So now that I got all these and I've synchronized all of them to the same noise reduction, I'm going to save the images and I'll put them all in one folder and TIFF, compression zero. And you want this to be as high as quality as you can get and save them on out. TIFFs have almost the same ability to push and pull as RAWs do. So I'm done with that. Going to photo matrix, sorry, photomatic. I just I don't know why I want to say that. I like the uh, the matrix movies, and I just for some reason I always call it photo matrix, but it's photomatic, and uh, don't know why I say it, but I do. Right, let's go in here. I got some more here. I was just playing around. I'm gonna select these three because that's the ones that I want. Open them up. Now here's something key. Uh, when you're doing what I'm about to do. You don't want to have it align the source images and crop it because what it will do, it will do its best to align them. What I'm going to do later on is show you how to get rid of the noise in the sky so you don't really want to mess with any alignment or anything in photomatics because it will actually shift the images around and when you bring your original RAWs in, it won't match up. You have to like go in there and very look very closely and align them up manually, which you don't want to do. So don't do that. Make sure all this is off because all your noise reduction and everything else is done and if you took a photo of a tripod and, and we're very careful to make sure they're you're not bump the tripod and make sure they're lined up afterwards you're a-okay so we're going in here now like I said before if you want to see how I do my toe mapping and how everything works look at my other tutorial which is there this guy let's go back here all right this is all done and actually I've tweaked this as good as I could and you can see already all the noise that's up in here look at this guy it just looks pretty bad but we're gonna fix that now you see some more noise in here pretty noisy you know uh, so we're gonna fix that too so we're just gonna process it out real quick come on six cores you can do it six cores the processing power boom alright so let's save this one out save as whatever it wants to save it as We'll save a 16-bit. I think the other ones were 16-bit too. All right, now let's go to Photoshop. Load it up, and there it is. All right, loading it up. All right, th there we go. 
And not too bad. Uh, you know, you see a lot of noise in here. And first we're going to attack that noise. This noise in this concrete awning type deal. And then we'll attack the sky noise to fix that. So what I'm going to do, I have my fast stone and we're going to grab the original one. And what's the best one to use? You don't want to pick a dark one. You want to pick this really, really bright one. We're going to pick this guy right here that has a decent middle exposure. So let's uh, first, let's drag this so we have some open area. If you don't, it'll pop it in there and uh, do that weird little X thing. I don't want to go over that right now, but just do this. Don't drop it in here drop it into a non-use workspace and okay we want to just grab this so already had the noise reductions done and we're going to let photoshop do some hdr to this to bring out the detail so just go ahead and open it up and this is why it's very important that you do not tell this program which is photomatics to crop the image because if you did then this image wouldn't line up we told it not to crop it and just take off all those settings in the beginning and just tell it to build an HDR image profile and do a tone mapping based on this tutorial then when you drop it in there everything will line up perfectly so first let's go into uh, HDR toning in Photoshop and let's start pulling out some of this detail in here so it matches this guy a little more. And Photoshop does a little better job at not creating noise than Photomatix does. So let's uh, drag saturation down, give it some more detail. So you're already starting to get the HDR look. But you see we're using one exposure, so the sky is straight blown out. All this is blown out, and that's not what you want in an HDR image. It will look like an HDR effect, but it's not an HDR image. There's been some people who say, oh, I can do it with one image. You can't. See that? See this guy? Not going to work. So we're concentrating on this area right in here. And let's just pull this up a little more, get a little more shadows, bring those out a little more. A little more detail, bring the gamma down, and we'll mess with curves to fix the rest of this. Let's fix this by giving a little more strength there. We don't have any more weird edges. We'll fix this section here later. All right. It's going to process it. We're going to go select all. Control C for copy. This one, Control V for paste. Don't worry about the warnings, fine. All right, so now. We're just going to pull out our area of interest, which is this right in here, in the awning, big concrete thing section. All right. So I'm going to hide. Actually, I'm going to duplicate the background layer because you can't hide it if you don't. And I'm going to delete the background layer. So that way we can have a nice, good checkerboard transparency. Bring that top layer we just did in Photoshop. A nice big erase tool make sure you're selected on the layer you want to erase and we're going to erase all the sky stuff oops my bad go back to this i hit the wrong buttons and you can adjust your size right in here how big you want it Get a little bigger just how you want it i'm going to use keyboard shortcuts which is the brackets on your keyboard both brackets will make it bigger i want to make it smaller so that's what you want to do so I'm going to delete all this blown out nasty area. A little bit of this. Give her that. See, I'm doing a good job of feathering it out. And that's what you want. So you can't really see a big difference in what you need. I like the highlights better than the other one. And this is kind of what you're going to do to uh, get the process you want, the look you want. And get rid of all that nasty noise that HDR can very easily add into your image. Give us some of that. Give it more of that. I want just the awning. So that looks pretty good. Let's bring that one in. And you see it's already starting to blend together pretty nicely. And I got a little bit up in here. So let's give it that. You want to click these on and off and watch your whole image to make sure you're only bringing in what you want to bring in. 
So now, I want to be a little bit darker to match, oh, don't do that. A little bit darker to match the other one. Image adjustment, curves. So let's just uh, bring the darks down, which is down here. Darks are down here, lights are up here. Remember that. Too much, too much. Let's leave that point there so I don't adjust those real, real, real dark sections. And go to the mid-tones here. And kind of push and pull those, push some whites out. Pull these down, whites down a little bit. Off and on, off and on. That looks good. So now, if I double click to see I'm 100%, you can see this is the tone map section I let Photoshop do to fix. And this is the photo matrix version. And you can see there's a lot of noise in there. See, uh, 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 uh. And basically you're using the best of both worlds, which is Photoshop and Photomatix because they both do toe mapping different, different algorithms, and it depends on what your look is. So I like that. I'm gonna blend them in just a little bit. I'm gonna top one in with the bottom one, which is basically your base layer, and kind of bring them both together, but not to the point where you can see too much noise. So let's go back in here, and you can see a difference. Boom to the boom, and that looks pretty good. All right, so our awning is adjusted, at least how I like it. I don't know how you like it, but I think that's better. All right, so now we're going to work on this section right here to make it look nice. So let's go back over here, and I'm going to choose this one, which has the most sky isolation in the exposure. So I'm going to bring it in to empty section. Don't put it in here. And if you want, you can. You'll see how annoying it is. I'm going to put it in there so I have a separate one. And if you put it in to your actual working piece, you can't do any tone mapping to it. So we're going to do it like this. Uh, let's turn this clarity down. This is uh, camera raw defaults. This is a default uh, off the uh, camera. Add some uh, noise reduction. A little bit of sharpening in the middle. And open it up. And now we are going to, where to go? Right here. Focus on just this. First let's do a little tone mapping to it image adjustments and HDR toning. Voila. All right, uh, let's look how I want it. So let's turn this down a little more detail. Uh, let's turn the exposure down. That's pretty good. That'll work. All right, it's gonna generate its HDR image. And see all this noise in here? We're not worried about that because we just want what's up here in the sky. So let me get up in here and let's clean that dust off in the sensor. Clone stamp tool work fine for this. It's very easy. Just select above it and ba-doom, ba-doom. Make it smaller. Select right beneath it and let's do this one too. A little more here. And we're good. So let's Select all, control C for copy, go back to our image we're working on which has our layers, control V, don't worry about the warning, paste it in there and see it paste up perfectly. So I'm going to just select what I want in the sky, select it, control shift I for inverse, delete, and deselect it, and let's just isolate this and feather it out. Don't feather too much into your sky because it'll bring the noise back in these other images. So we're just going to take just the outside of this. Get rid of the edges so you can't see the very apparent. And just kind of blend it back here. And you have to use your, um, your flow and all that and your size to get it how you want. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it, you're fine. That looks good. So now our sky is fixed. Boom, to the boom. Boom, to the boom. That looks pretty good. All right, well, that's pretty much it. And you can do the same thing for overexposed areas like in here. You can go back to uh, your image like in this and grab this section here to bring in more detail that's overexposed in this concrete the exact same way, exact same way that I cleared up the sky over here. And that is pretty much it. That's one of the best ways to get the best results out of HDR tone mapping out of multiple exposures using single exposures to kind of 
you know, accent the other ones to bring out all the best features in both programs, which is Photomatics and Photoshop. So that's pretty much it for me today, guys. Have fun and peace out.